Hi everyone, welcome to our new series called Anna's Nail Advice, where viewers, so you guys, send me pictures for me to review and give you advice on what's happening with your nails. And today I'm going to talk about yellowing nails and what to do with a cracked nail. So I had a viewer to send me these pictures. And by the way, if you are interested in me reviewing your nails, please send me pictures of the best quality possible so I can really see details of the nails and send them to my email, the salonlife at gmail.com. And a quick story on what's going on with your nails and what kind of questions you have. And I will be really happy to look them over and give you an idea what I would do if you were sitting in front of me at my manicure table, what I would tell you. So let's look at these pictures. So first of all, what do the client, sorry, viewer said. So she said, my nails don't feel hard and brittle, nor soft and bendy. At least that's what I can say based on what I see. Okay, here, um, normally you wouldn't see that, but you would feel it. So nails normally are a little bit bendy and we do need flexibility. We don't need, and we don't want nails that are uh, very hard, but we don't need, want them very, very thin and bendy either because then the nail polish doesn't last and the nails break as well. So her question is, the main thing I wanted to ask you is since on my thumbnail, I have this crack I managed to get myself. I somehow slammed it on the steering wheel while driving. How would you fix it? What is the best fix in your opinion? I mean, I heard some using the tea bag fix or even use gel polish to cover the cracked nail in order to let it grow without worrying too much about it. And beside this, what can I do to eliminate or at least reduce the yellowness of my nails? I really hope you can give me your personal opinion and advice on what my nails look like and what I can do to improve their gener general look and conditions. Okay, let's look. So first of all, wow. Like seriously, her nails are absolutely perfect. And you can see, and I will read later, her nail care is solid. You can, you can really tell that she puts a lot of effort, like look at these nails, into caring for her nails. So here's what I see. Yes, I see some yellowing, which is completely normal. It's, that's what happens when you wear nail polish. And there are a few reasons for it, and I'll cover that later. But look at that shape of her nail. Like you can see that the surface is nice and even, nice and healthy. What I see right away is how healthy her sidewalls are. So this is a perfect shape, nice and strong here around the edges. What sometimes people do in order to achieve thinner look of the nails, they file this area, which significantly weakens the nail. So you can see here how this nail is nice and straight all the way to the area where the free edge starts. So the loose part of the nail starts and then it gently slopes to the end. So the, 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 um, she didn't try to thin out her nail here because some people file into this area here. Same thing, really nice and symmetric shape. Um, this nail probably is a little bit on an angle. That's why it seems a little bit, shape seems, yes, a little bit um, different. Same thing with, with this. This probably, this nail was a little bit thinner or sometimes um, surface of the nail underneath gets a little bit thinner from whatever that is. So this is not, not a big deal here. Now let's look at the surface of the nails. And this is why I really need to have good quality picture because I want to see how the light bounces off the surface of the nails. So as we can see here, there are some ridges which are completely normal and that actually suggests a very healthy and normal nail plate. You can see the ridges here, perfectly normal. And you see how the surface is nice and flat. There is no chunks missing from the nail. There is no surface damage whatsoever. And again, there is a reason for it because she really takes care of her nails and we'll, I'll show you what she does um, later. You can see, and this is absolutely beautiful to see, you can see a perfect intact proximal nail fold, which is a living skin. And a lot of times in order to, for people to try to achieve 
um, beautiful skin around the nails they cut this area and they file it and they damage it and that's why it gets worse here you see absolutely perfect perfect proximal nail fold you don't have to use uh, these terms you can just say skin around the nails and the sides are also really nice and healthy the cuticle is what sometimes come well sometimes yes sometimes sometimes you just don't see it much it comes from underneath the skin, underneath the proximal nail fold. So there's two pieces of skin. There is the proximal nail fold. So this is the living skin. Even that edge is absolutely normal. This is still living skin. It's a little bit keratinized, so it's a little bit harder, but it's because it's the edge of the skin. It's completely normal. And here as well, absolutely beautiful. I mean, some people just have, other than obviously, um, very good care. Some people just have very good genetics. Their nail plates are um, harder. They are a little bit thicker and there is really not much we can do about genetics, but we can do a lot about what we, a lot with what we do with our nails. Now let's look at the thumb that's cracked. Okay, so here I can see I think the crack is right here, just there is a little crack. And again, sidewalls are absolutely perfect. And this just happens. Um, I have a feeling that possibly this happened a little bit higher and this had a chance to grow out because usually when these um, stress cracks happen, they happen here in kind of a halfway in the middle of the nail because that's where the nail bends when you put pressure on this area. It bends usually right here. So maybe this grew out a little bit and maybe it didn't. And what I would do is you are not going to be super impressed, but I wouldn't do anything or I would just shorten the nail because sometimes what it is, you can actually shorten the nails or the nail without shortening it too much here because sometimes what happens is i can't really see how the crack is but sometimes the crack is almost like a flake and you can shorten it gently and then kind of you are not going to lose the nail all the way here if the crack ends here you can still kind of end up with this shape right so you might be able to oops you might be able to still kind of save the nail because if you kind of let it go this can break all the way across and then you end up with the very short nails and this happens because of trauma usually and that's why i highly suggest using a very good nail oil preferably something that is jojoba based because that has a small molecule small enough that it gets absorbed into the nail plate and it plasticizes not only the nail polish but also the the nail plate giving the nail a little bit more flexibility because usually strong nails like this tend to get a little bit almost too strong we need a perfect balance between flexibility and and hardness so we can achieve toughness so the nails that are tough they resist breaking and they are not too bendy so let's look at her if you're interested let's look at her routine because this will give you a good idea why her nails are so good I always change my nail polish once a week and this is why I have weekly nail care routine. Awesome. It starts with removing any nail polish from my nails with a nail polish remover. I don't use pure acetone anymore, but I still use one that has a percentage of acetone in it, which is fine. I mean, it's preference. I, I like to use pure acetone, but if you don't have to, you don't have to. And then I carefully wash my hands with gentle hand soap and pat them dry. This is so important. The gentle hand, hand soap, we very often over clean our hands and we use solvents that are way too harsh. So I suggest using, for example, for me, it really, really makes a big difference. I use CeraVe facial wash, the foaming one because it has gentle enough ingredients that do not strip my skin too much because I like to wash my hands quite a bit. I work with clients and that's why before and after each client I wash my hands. So I make sure that I do it gently, gently pat them dry, great. After that, I use my current cuticle butter that is Lush Lemony Flutter. I've heard about, I think this is a name of a brand. 
or a product. And a hand cream to cover the rest of my hands, which is fantastic, which is from a brand called Edotea. In the meantime, I gently push back my cuticles back with a silicone pointed cuticle stick. Very good. So when the skin is taken care of, it has a nice elasticity, the skin around the nails. So then you can push it back. But the thing is, and a lot of people have that wrong, is they think that they're pushing back cuticles and they're pushing back this area. So what they're pushing back is a proximal nail fold which sometimes exposes the cuticle. Sometimes what people end up doing is pushing both, pushing the cuticle and the proximal nail fold, which is fine too. What I like to do sometimes is just push away the proximal nail fold, which exposes the cuticle, and then I remove the cuticle. And I'll show you very quickly what I'm talking about because, I mean, her nails are perfect, so you don't see the cuticle. But I'll show you here a picture that I took of one of my clients. And you can clearly see what's going on here. So the cuticle, this is not a cuticle. This is not overgrown cuticle. This is a stretched skin, really. And this is living skin. So what happens is when this skin, proximal nail fold, living skin, gets stuck to the nail plate, and it's not pushed back, and it's not elastic enough to bounce back nicely, as the nail is growing, that skin is stretching. And eventually when it's dry and it's not elastic, it's not taken care of, that skin will crack and peel and cause a whole bunch of mess, right? So here I wrote down exactly what we're talking about. So the cuticle is this white tissue that is growing underneath the proximal nail fold. So the cuticle is a thin film of dead skin that grows in between the proximal nail fold and the nail plate and that acts almost like a it's kind of like a, a layer that seals together the proximal nail fold and the nail plate so nothing gets underneath so I'm really worried sometimes when people start making these pockets and things like that because the nail right here in this area is very that this is where our body is making the nail so this area has to be very protected because if you put a lot of pressure and if you start digging you can not only damage the freshly formed nail but you can also damage the matrix where the nail is growing and you can permanently damage um, or alter how the nail plate is growing so be very very careful so here again it's this is not a torn cuticle it's a torn skin it's a it's a skin that's on the side of the nail so you can see the cuticle right here. This is a cuticle. This is proximal nail fault. And I have another picture very quickly. There you go. Okay, so this is living skin. This part is still living skin. That's why it bleeds when it's cut or torn, right? And this, even if you cut it, it will never bleed. This is cuticle. It's a dead, non-living tissue, so you can, you can pull back or push back this area so you can see the cuticle and then gently you can remove the cuticle so then your nail is nice and and nice and clean for nail polish application okay going back to this picture she says that she lets all these products absorb very well into her hands nails and cuticles so the skin and after that she files her nails because that's the thing that's what always confused me you're supposed to push back and care for the cuticles, but then you're supposed to remove them, right? So that's very confusing. So now you know you're supposed to push back the proximal nail fold. You're supposed to remove the cuticle. By then, the cuticle is gone completely. There was no more cuticle, and um, that's it. So after that, she files her nails with a glass nail file from Mont Bleu. This is the file that I use as well. It's really, really good. I have the links below, affiliate if you are interested and by the way thank you so much for purchasing through our affiliate links they really help so one of the best purchases ever and then she finally goes to bed and she does all the steps in the evening night time so this is what i recommend especially for people that have some surface damage or weaker nails is giving the nails a bit of a break to reabsorb all the oils that 
when we wear nail polish are not absorbing into the nail, right? So I don't think it's the breathing that the nail is doing, but the nail surface absorbs a lot of oils, not just from the oils, but even from our skin, from hair, things like that. So I think the nail needs the oils in order to stay healthy and wearing nail polish prevents that, right? Okay, let's look at the, the next picture. What else does she do? When I wake up the next morning, I put some more hand cream and cuticle butter and let it absorb for at least 15 minutes. They were awesome. Then she washes her hands twice with gentle hand soap. Gentle is great. Pat them dry and make sure there's no fuzzies of the surface on the surface of the nails. I don't use acetone to wipe my nails prior to the actual manicure. With colored nail polish, I just wash my hands and nails and I'm ready to go. Now I'm ready to paint my nails as I always do every week. So that's great to hear that that works. It definitely, for some people, especially with more porous nails, that, that definitely will work. Have you noticed she doesn't do any buffing, right? She doesn't do any buffing. So when you push back that skin on a regular basis, there is not going to be anything that's overgrown. There is not going to be anything that you're going to have to buff or anything else. The care is much more important than the removal of the cuticles and the the... The, the buffing of the of the natural nails the, she doesn't buff which shows the surface of the nail is nice and healthy and she says as you can see from my pictures i have stained the nails due to the massive use of nail polish especially dark or highly pigmented colors which are my favorites but that doesn't bother me as i'm always wearing color nail polish so no one can see my yellow nails i've never worn any gel acrylic gel nail polish in fact i stay away from those as i'm too scared to ruin my nails, especially because of improper removal or prepping of the nails. Very, very true. And this is sad because, you know, I come from nail technician. I am a nail technician. I work in a salon. I have clients and I see, unfortunately, what's what's going on. And I see, sadly, this is a huge topic for another video, possibly, but um, a lot of improper care. And that's not always the nail technician's fault. So I'm not going to get into it today, but that is definitely an interesting topic. Okay, so going back to the pictures, we still have to talk about yellowing. So anyway, so <laughs> going back before we get to yellowing, my goodness, there was a lot to talk about. Uh, we can talk about the patches that she mentioned. I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't do it. The reason why is in order to do, let's say there was a break here, in order to do a patch on the nail, you would have to do like a larger patch so it holds onto the nail plate. Because if you do tiny one, it's going to just break off and, and take more nail with it. So you would have to make a bigger patch. And now, this is the key. A lot of times people are doing these things because they don't want to worry about their nails. But believe it or not, it's the opposite. When you have any type of patch, when you have anything that is stuck to your nail, then you have to worry about more about the nails. Because what happens is then you have something that is bonded to the natural nail quite strongly sometimes, right? Because we don't want it to come off. So when you put pressure, when you uh, pull that nail, when you're moving your hands, you are pulling on that bond. And what happens is the nail cells start to get loose and they start to get pulled away from the natural nail. So what happens is when the patch is this big, you're going to end up with a damaged area like this big eventually. So, and the bond that is between the patch and the natural nail is never permanent. Because especially cyanoacrylates, which is like a, the super glue, things like that, they are, eventually they are going to break down, especially in water. They don't last for a very long time. So they might last a couple of weeks, then you're gonna have to redo it. And then you're gonna have to buff the nail and then glue that patch to a bottom layer of the nails and then you're going to do more and more damage. So then you're going to end up with like a big chunk of damaged nail. So, and then you're going to have this much to grow out. Not just this much, but this much. Same thing with the gel polish. Usually when you are doing gel polish, you're going to have to put gel polish all over the whole plate. And then two, three weeks later, you're going to have to remove it because it doesn't last forever. And then you're going to have that whole nail affected. In my opinion, not worth it. 
because you cannot just put gel polish usually on this one little area either. So sadly there is not that much that you can do. And even putting the adhesive or the glue just in that patch you can try. You can try to do it once and really then baby that nail. Okay, so don't forget about that nail, baby that nail until it grows out. Another thing that you can do, you can try shortening that nail a little bit just so there is less pressure on this area. That's what I would just shorten it. And it's your thumb, so usually it's not as visible when it comes to the thumbs. Now, let's talk about the yellowing. So uh, there were a few, well, two th theories when it comes to yellowing. Um, a lot of people say it's the the colorants, the dyes in the nail polish that stain the nail plate. And you can see how the staining is more visible here and it fades, right? Because, so for example, if she polishes her nail every week, this um, nail is quite long, right? So let's say this is one month, two, three, four, five, six. This is like seven months of growth or six, something like that. So seven times four, 28 times. So this part of the nail has been polished 28 times. This part, let's say 25, this one 20 and so on, right? So this part has been polished only once or twice. That's why there is less staining. So when that stain is so gradual, um, it's to me that suggests that it's a very gradual staining. So it's a little bit at a time. So it's not like she applied something once and it stained the nail because if that was the case, it would be very, very even. You would see the border here, how the nail stained. Actually, I had that once happen with uh, one polish. I'm going to link the video, put it in the description box. It was quite, quite um, yellow. And yeah, I was not very happy at all. Um, she also says that she doesn't really care that, that much about yellow me, yellowing because she doesn't wear her nails clear. I do. So that's why I was really, you know, bothered with that. But anyway, so how, what happens? So some people say it's the, the pigments, the colorants from the nail polish, which to me does not uh, make too much sense because it's always yellow, right? So, but it's true that the red pigments are more likely to stain and the yellow pigments are more likely to stain. So maybe those pigments are staining. It could be two things, right? But what I did notice is that pretty much every nail polish on the market has nitrocellulose in it, except for Dazzle Dry. And I know people are getting sick and tired of me talking about Dazzle Dry but that is the only polish that is nitrocellulose free. Now, there was nothing wrong with nitrocellulose, but unfortunately, in my experience, tends to stain the nails and sometimes cause a little bit more surface damage than products or product without it, because as far as I know, Dazzle Dry is the only company that makes nitrocellulose free nail polish. So, um, I've started using Dazzle Dry about three years ago and I, con I um, converted all my clients, my pedicure clients especially, to Dazzle Dry and these, my clients were polished on all the time, like throughout the whole year. Their yellowing grew out completely, their surface of their nails greatly improved, the nails were smooth, it's just incredible the difference. I will also link another article that I wrote and I have it on Patreon and you'll see step by step what happened to my clients toenails as they grew out and when I switched them to Dazzle Dry. Unbelievable. So none of my clients have any yellowing that are wearing Dazzle Dry and that's many people and I never experienced any yellowing. So uh, Vivian Valente, the owner and the chemist behind Dazzle Dry strongly believes that is the nitrocellulose that's causing the the uh, yellowing. I read a lot of um, material that Doug Shun wrote, who's a chemist and uh, cosmetic formulator, and he was saying that there are different grades of nitrocellulose, that the nitrocellulose that is high quality should not be yellowing the nails, and sometimes a poor quality nitrocellulose does, can yellow the nails. I don't know. I've used very good quality polishes and I know some clients use very high end, very good professional products as well. They still get yellowing. So I have a feeling that it is the nitrocellulose that's causing this yellowing. So 
first of all, what I would not do ever is try to yellow, uh, sorry, try to uh, buff the nail surface. And, you know, I'm telling that to you because I did it to myself. A year ago when I stained my nails so yellow, I couldn't stand it. So I thought, okay, it's for you guys. I'm going to buff them and see how far the stain has reached the nail plate. And let me tell you, it's pretty far. So I kind of damaged my nails. So it was on two nails that was especially visible and it took months for it to grow out. So I don't recommend it at all. Um, I have experience now with a couple base coats that are nitrocellulose free that I've been wearing on my right hand as compared to the uh, left hand that is nitrocellulose free. And just wearing the base coat that does not have nitrocellulose, my yellowing has grown out because slightly I had some yellowing because I'm testing so many different polishes. So, but the problem with the nitro nitrocellulose free nail polish is that, or the base coat, is that it peels off very easily. So now I've tried three different brands and they all are not very long lasting. I would say after three, four days, they definitely start to peel and you can almost peel it off like in one chunk. So this is very consistent. Nitrocellulose in a nail polish, it's a film forming ingredient. So it also has a quite good bond with the natural nail. So, and it creates that shiny, nice, hard film on the nail surface. So the polishes without it, I guess, are a little bit more flexible. They dry more flexible and maybe they don't bond as well to the natural nail. Okay, so this is a lot of information. I hope I didn't bore you with all this information. I hope that this, this helped and I have quite a few more um, viewers that send me pictures with amazing, um, interesting uh, situations. So I hope you enjoy this series and uh, please let me know what you think because this is something that's very, very new. And thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.